Thank you very much, Machine. Hello, everybody. I'm Quickshot, joined by Frost Gurren, as we are going to jump into an extremely pivotal matchup in the race for playoffs. Both of these teams tied in sixth position with one other chasing. You cannot afford to drop any more games. Yeah, and I was quickly peeking in on kind of what the head-to-head -head could be before these teams, because they are tied up in that spot. And Schalke, they've already beaten Misfits once, so they could actually have the head-to-head -head here if it comes down to the wire to catapult them into the playoff race. So important. If both teams end with the same wins and losses, but one team has a 2-0 record over their opponents. That tiebreaker rule will mean they are placed higher. Now, as we get ready for draft, Misfits had side selection for this matchup. They elected blue side. What do you make of that as we look towards the draft and maybe some of the priority champions that could swing this game? You know, I had a lot of words yesterday about Silas being disabled on the 9.4 patch, how pivotal he has been and how with him being disabled, it kind of gives a free pass to give more power back towards red side because you can kind of ban out three different champions and you lose a lot of your power on blue side from priority pick. Um, and in terms of what that priority pick will be for Misfits, I have to say something like if a Draven's left over, they'll probably grab that. But it's kind of been a mixed bag between all of our LEC teams. We've seen some Karthus jungles, some Lucian, some Draven, some Galios. Uh, and I don't know if I really agree that blue side is the most powerful side right now. Yeah, and yesterday, you know, you mentioned that Renekton, five games out of five. We're still playing the same patch as last week, but obviously with Silas disabled this time around. Uh, Renekton with two wins, three losses. It started great, it ended abysmally. And I want to see whether or not that trend continues today. Uh, as we are in the draft, Misfits will have the option to ban first, and they've already taken off the table Jace and Thresh over on the side of Shelka, Draven, and Lucian. So a definite focus, obviously, towards Hans Summer from the Shelka boys. And the Ban that's peeking out to me right now is if they're going to get rid of the Jarvan. That's been a uh, immediate go-to as a priority pick because of its flex potential between the top and the jungle position. But they are going to leave it open because it's going to be LeBlanc. All right, so we will take a look. Obviously, as you guys can see, there is a small graphical error. So just to run you through the bands, Misfits have removed Jace, Thresh, and Lissandra. And over on the Schalke side, they've taken out Draven, Lucian, and LeBlanc. So first pick priorities up. You mentioned the Jarvan is open and available. So as will have a few more seconds to lock in something for his team, and it's going to be the Callista. Yeah, but one of the bands that did make it through, uh, Callista. Now, previously in the LEC, it actually wasn't touched a lot. We were one of the first regions to pick it up and start playing it, but only about 280 carries were picking up in the league, and Han Sama was one of them. Globally, Callista has been an absolute terror, uh, specifically in the LCK, and she works very well with Alistar, which is why I'm so happy that Shalka quickly snap grab Alistar away and don't want to give such a powerful 2v2 combo to Han Sama and Gorilla. And especially when you consider Gorilla's Alistar during the opening games of the split. He played it six times. He's won four of those games and uh, has definitely been one of the more impressive champions in Gorilla's hands. But yesterday, his Galio felt very good. Do you Can you combo it with a Callista? What do you make of that? I mean, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. It's going to do a lot of the same things that Alistar would. It's kind of interesting. It feels like this is either Ignar saying I'm much more comfortable to play the Alistar or the Galio because the other big combo is the Jarvan Galio and the, uh, the Cannonball comp, you know, as one jumps on, the other one can stack on top of it. So it feels like a direct denial. I would expect if Galio or... LeBron would also work a champion that you can just kind of use as a boulder to throw into the yes. enemy team is what they're going to be fishing for. Yeah, exactly the case. And of course, yesterday, uh, Hillisang's Braum, very, very impressive standing up for the team. So the duo is locked in here for Misfits Gaming. It's another initiation champion for Max Law. When we did the tricast yesterday, Vedius was very, very adamant he wanted to see more initiation champions from Max Law. Now we need to see if the rest of the team can actually follow up on some of those calls, as uh, Hussein alluded to. And finally, there's the Tristana for upset. It's also very easy mode initiation for Misfits putting together. We see Fnatic run this composition a lot. The Braum, Sejuani, these two work very well together because their passives can proc similar to each other and they yeah. have a lot of burst damage when they team up. And it's also a lot of non-committal CC. You can throw out your Qs, you can throw out your Sejuani ult, see what you catch before you decide that you want to engage on it. So tons of easy engage options across Misfits and tons of power given to multiple people. It's not just up to Max Lore, it's not just up to Gorilla, it can also be up to Han Sama on that cliff to say, let's fight right now, let's be decisive. And the two players that have been very, very heavily focused, criticized, discussed on the Misfits side in Febivin and Soways, they've yet to lock in their champions. So I want to see what direction the Misfits team composition decides to round out with. We're in phase two of bans. Schalke have taken away the Irelia. The rise has been a response. And no real indication yet as both teams have got their duos and jungles already locked in. So right now we're trying to pinch kind of blind pickable uh, champions. Things that do pop out to me are things like the Orianna, which fit very well in both these compositions. And we've seen Febivin um, 
be a, a pretty recent pickup of the Orianna and showing very well on that champion. I actually like that Renekton is taken away because, again, you're looking for strong, blind pickable champions from the blue side. Well, let's see what uh, Schalke decides to, to pick. I mean, they've got to go safe blind pick either for mid or for top. Then they have the option to counter pick. So it's a difficult scenario to be in. And a reminder that Schalke are 0 6 in the back half of the split. Misfits 3-3. Three and three. The last ban will be the Yorick taken off the table. And Odo's going for a blind cannon. Well, when you've already pinched the Aurelia and the Renekton, Jace is also gone. You have a pretty free ride to grab the cannon. Um, I'm curious what the option is going to be for Soas. He could fall back to something classic like a Scion or an Urgot at this point. And of course, the cannon into that's going to be a comfortable matchup. So, you know, if you look at Soas' as a champion pool, locking in the cannon, sort of throwing down that gauntlet, going, I dare you to play your comfort because I'll be happy with it. Instead, it's going to be the Yasuo. And Speaking what of comfort. <laughs> will be the follow up. I quite like this option where you combine, there's multiple knockups, you know, Callista, Sejuani, Braum. There's tools to enable Febivin here. And obviously, that Vladimir in the top lane. Vlad into cannon, comfortable matchup, some scaling tools on the side of Misfits. The thing that I just love about Vladimir is like, what do you do against him? How can you force him out of lane? It doesn't yep. matter if you win the lane, if you never get to take his tower, or if you're never able to punish him. And then his ability to hyperscale on a side lane and uh, also help out a 5v5, he just offers so much versatility to teams. And I wish teams would put a little bit higher priority on him, but I love to see Soaz grabbing it today. Okay, so let's take a look at the team compositions overall as Zoe has now been locked in for Abadage. Uh, he has played that once before it was a loss but his performance was pretty good. He went four, one, and five on that champion. Um, the Misfits gaming comp to me, fairly simple. I think they've got some side lane pressure. Uh, they also can team fight. The Schalke comp, a little bit more of a mixed bag in my eyes, like the Zoe and the Cannon. Uh, don't really add up, you know? There's a lot of engaged tools, and Zoe just wants to paddle star away. I mean, I think when you do set up to the execution of the team fights, it's really about having that chip damage, blowing someone up on Zoe, and then feeling confident enough to immediately pull the trigger and follow up with the Jarv and the Kennen, things like that. But I do agree with you. This draft felt super reactionary from Schalke. Um, Zoe does work as a, a decent blind pick champion, so you usually see her earlier on in drafts. But being picked into Yasuo, it was never going to be fun for Abadage. He's literally looking at this lane like, I'm not going to be able to kill the Yasuo. I'm not going to be able to fight the Yasuo. I am just here to clear the wave and start fishing with my jungler. This is not about the 1v1 in mid. Uh, it's not about the 1v1 in mid. We'll keep our eyes on which lane needs to unlock the win here for Schalke. And of course, that Cannon versus Vlad matchup. Cannon been played four times by Odo. It's his most played champion. Three wins, one loss. And the pressure could not be higher. Frostgurin out of all of the possibilities for the remaining games, of which there's 32,000 potential options, 40% of them is a lock-off position for uh, playoffs for Schalke. Odds are not in their favor. They have to pick up a win here, increase those odds, and take one step closer to the postseason. It's just so unreal, the trajectory that both these teams have had. They, they sprinted off the starting line. Yep. We were calling Misfits a super team. Schalke were the uh, the big brain team. We yes. thought they were going to compete with G2, and now they're competing for sixth place. Unbelievable turn in the second half of the split. And we need to see who's going to recover best. You know, who's actually going to step up when, when the pressure gets turned on. And for the time being, Misfits have grouped up uh, for a little bit of a level one. Some shenanigans afoot. And if Ignor steps too far forward, he could be in some trouble. It's a, it's a good news, bad news situation, Quick Shot. It's a good news, someone has to win today. Yes. And the bad news is, is that... Someone has to lose? Both these teams are <laughs> sitting on a knife's edge and fans are white-knuckling watching this match. Yeah, absolutely the case. If you're a Misfits or a Schalke fan, you're going to be screaming for these guys to pick up the win. And... I mean, how does Schalke bounce back? How does Schalke find the mentality to recover? Memento had some very strong words yesterday, you know, talking about how he's, he can't play the game anymore. And uh, it was heartwarming to see Brox actually jump in and say, dude, I've been there. You know, I've, I've felt it. And you just got to dig deep. He's not a champion like Jarvan. So a uh, little bit more of a committed engage than the likes of a Sedge alt. But um, fortunately, there's a lot of tools around him as well. If Ignar, if Odo uh, can go in and obviously some cleanup from upset, there's some tools that Schalke can work with. And, you know, we were trying to approach, you know, what is the Schalke problem? What is actually going wrong with this team? And we've looked at it so many different ways. We've tried opening up the stats and trying pulling out these obscure numbers. You know, is it something with the jungle proximity? What's happening? And statistically, Schalke actually look fairly similar. Obviously, when you look at their holistic stats, because they've been losing games, it, it seems pretty obvious. But in what they're doing, 
thing. It's almost the same game plan, and it's just that everyone else just got better around them, yeah. and they didn't develop, they didn't grow, and then over time they lost that confidence. And when they would make, you know, these snap second split plays, they've now second guessed themselves. They make mistakes, they fall down, and they throw away games just on nerves alone. And I think it's super important to note that Schalke Nulfi had to rebuild the entire team. Just as a reminder, it's not something we said for a little while. Upset the only remember, uh, member remaining from last year's finalist squad. Dylan Falco came in at the beginning of the split, formerly a fanatic, and he brought a lot of learning and understanding with him. But as the meta shifted, exactly like you said, Frost, the team didn't adapt and shift with it. We've obviously got some vertical jungling on the go as both teams have conceded one respective half of the map. And I actually think that's very smart of Memento to not even try to contest this side of the map. Uh, against Callista and Braum, it is a very scary, very powerful 2v2. I know that um, Reckless has kind of taught LEC fans that you can play Tristana plus any melee support and somehow win a lane, but it usually doesn't work out for you. No, really, really difficult. And of course, Upset's actually running Halo Blades on his Tristana. So I see how that one's going to work out for him. Not one that I've seen too frequently. It just feels like everyone's experimenting with the keystones. Um, it's a bit more common for the Callista to yes. also run the Hail of Blades. I do want to focus in a little bit on the 2v2 while we have it on our screen and kind of talk about the different reasons why you would pick up what support. Uh, where you go for the Gallia, where you go for the Braum or the Alistar, and kind of what they both offer their teams. With Alistar, um, your level 6 dive, very powerful, your ability to snap engage, so you're looking at pairing him with instantaneous CC, things like a rise, you can root them up and suddenly Alistar's right on top of them, chaining CC combos, um, and then he offers a massive tanky frontline. Hold the thought. Well, holding that thought, Abadage forced to flash early. Max Law with an early proactive gank, summon spell blown. He's definitely not playing that lane now. Again, Abadage's here like, I've got my cleanse, I don't have my flash, I'm just here to survive, I want level five. Well, let's see whether or not Misfits can punish because that flash window timing is now down. Um, I actually want to look at Max Law Memento because our pregame very heavily focused on both of those players and it's both Max Law Memento that I've struggled in the second half of the split. Kills plus assists, 10th versus 5th. Jungle proximity will just tell you the amount of time they spend around their lane is not super indicative. But when you look at the forward percentage, the amount of time they spend across the halfway mark in the rift, these guys are struggling. Uh, definitely not pushing very deep into enemy territory very frequently. And that's, again, an, an indication of teams that are playing defensive, playing reactive maybe, and, and not necessarily as proactive. The word that I'm going to keep saying is second-guessing yourself. Yeah. Uh, and that's what's really been happening to Maxlor and Memento. You can see it all over social media. You can see it when they approach plays that they kind of, they waffle around a little bit. They lose some of their, temping and their, uh, their tempo and their pacing. So I think early game, if one of them gets something going, can be so important in terms of finding confidence and finding momentum to trust yourself to force more plays. Because both these teams have ridiculous options riddled throughout both these compositions to start fights. What I do like like about that is when a team does get ahead, assuming they use their tools, uh, they'll just continue to stay ahead. Uh, then you're just looking for execution, looking for timing, and Memento is going to be looking to execute a gank down this bottom lane. I think that was a full back ping on the side of Misfits. As you can see, a ring of wards around the blue buff. Max Law's going to be probably like assuming, guessing, picking up where uh, Memento might be. And here's an initiation. Winter's Bite will tag Memento. Defensive flash already. No further follow-up as Ignar and Upset. A little unsure, backing away. Minion Wave pushing towards Misfits. And Misfits not done yet. Max Law with a very proactive start this game. Two ganks, two successful flashes blown. But I do want to quickly go back to the supports, because one of the things that Braum offers people is he makes the 3v3 with the jungler so much stronger uh, because of how he can apply CC for anyone with his passive and the extra burst damage there. So you saw, as soon as Schalke saw that it was going to be the 3v3, that they didn't have the numbers advantage, they did not want to take that fight. No, definitely not. <laughs> Get slept in the air by Febby. Definitely playing in the face of Abadage. Uh, you mentioned the non-interactive lane for Abadage. Uh, he's going to be in a little bit of pressure. Somewhat expected, I think, until he can get a few more levels on that battle star. And obviously being flashless is a small pain. But Febby up 55 to 44 CS. This wave will be pushed into Abadage for the moment. He's playing very far back. And it's terrifying. And Abadage had to make this choice. He knew that he was going to go into a, a rough matchup here. And you're basically saying that Febbin is going to get a pretty free lane on this Yasuo. Yeah, maybe you don't give him some kills. Um, but Yasuo right now in the current patch, his itemization is so inexpensive for the amount of damage that he can output. And how hard he spikes on two items can be really terrifying. So if Febby just wants to take this one, this one slow, perfectly farm yeah. it up, and then be on time. Just play around that power window. It is disgusting. Well, Berserker's Creep's picked up. He's running the Concrete Keystone, and 
It's going to be up to Febby to find those standout performances. We actually talked yesterday about how he's kind of playing on an island, kind of playing by himself, not necessarily with the team. So I want to see some more team play because he needs, can use some help on those knockups. Uh, it, it simplifies playing around the team when you look at that. And Misfits, they're down 500 gold. You mentioned the lane, uh, sort of free lane. We've not really looked too much at top. So as just marginally behind CS by Odo, but Odo's obviously got the Klepto. Um, and what do you think of Soaz, considering he's Renekton yesterday, when 9-0-1, he's got a very comfortable matchup here. What do you think of Soaz, quick shot? Because you always put, you... I'm super critical. You I'm always super set this critical. Up. I mean, look, I've, I've been watching and casting Soaz for many, many years. And if he were playing the cannon, honestly, GG go next, right? I'm not a fan. But on Vlad, I'm much more comfortable. He's got more tools to escape. He's in a, in a matchup that he can have a bigger impact, so I like it. But I want to ask a professional because you can't really trust my opinion, Frosk. I always prefer when Soaz is on champions that are super self-sufficient, that they don't need a lot of attention and don't need a lot of resources from the team because then you leverage the amount of experience and veteranship that uh, Soaz brings to teams. So things like the Scion, it's not flashy, but you don't really need to help Scion in a lot of matchups. And he can just do his own thing and have so much control over kind of like global map pressure, his ability to use the Scion ultimate to get to where he needs to be on things that... You know, he needs to be the hard carry-on. Yeah, he can step up and do it, but applying more resources, having his team deal with him, I don't know, maybe it's a miscommunication problem or, or a desync in terms of synergy, but you don't get the same kind of bang for your buck and value of a player like Soaz. I think that's fair. Misfits have kind of shown they can't really consistently play around Soaz the few times they have tried it. Uh, there's been more misses than hits, I think. Um, but what about, like, the Vladimir? You know, does he fit that style that self as the late game goes? Obviously, he's going to be a scaling monster and and he's got some pressure. And oh, oh no! That is a tilter, especially on a team Walk and a it player off. that is already struggling with mentality issues. Walk it off. It's okay. Oh, that just feels so bad. Okay, man. so the impact that it actually does have is again, Abadage doesn't want to play the lane. He just wants to clear the minions. If you don't have the uh, the mana pool and region to do that, then suddenly you lose all control over mid lane because you're going to run out of mana and not be able to contest with the shove from Yasuo, which means you lose all control of your river and things like the dragon. Yeah, and of course, for any fans that were not watching on screen, Memento just picked up the blue buff accidentally as Abadage was unable to get the last hit. Misfits have had. I think superior vision control in the bottom half of the map most of these early game already. That is to be expected, though, with Callista Braum down there. Thank you. That means they're doing it right. Good job. And then this has allowed them to pick up the early Ocean Drake. Maxwell's got an ultimate, by the way, uh, but so do Ups and Ignar. So there's a lot of defensive tools. Both flashes are up. So I was waiting to see if Maxwell wanted to pull the trigger, and the answer right now is no. <laughs> it's about who he pulls the trigger on. Okay, I take it back. Maxwell has pulled the trigger, but it's on to Memento. Febivin gets slept by Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Cataclysm dumps out, and Febivin gets dunked. Abadage, after not getting blue buff, is able to pick up the kill with the help of Menendez. I hope that we get to see the uh, first start of that, because <laughs> I heard that quick shot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it felt like what Febby was doing is he was looking at the play that was happening just on the edge of his screen, as opposed to where he was walking, and he got caught out by Zoe in the transition. So hopefully on the replay, we can check what happened. Just uh, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, wrong place, wrong time for Febivin, but really right place, right time for Menemenem. Okay, I'm keeping my eyes on Abadage right now to see how he catches Yasuo moving over here. It's obviously with a uh, sleepy treble bubble. Yeah. And it's a point blank. Ah, oh, the wind wall. Just the wrong angle. And that gives a free out for Memento right there. Oh, such a good... And it's also a good confidence turnaround as well. Kill secured by Memento uh, after, you know, messing up on that blue buff. This has now allowed Shelka to pick up the Rift Herald and extend that gold lead. It is 1,000 now. It was 500 a few moments ago. Pretty much even CS across the board. And Klepto is helping Odo a lot. He's already up 300, 500 gold. Uh, call it 600 gold, actually, over Soaz. And I really like taking Klepto into a Vlad lane. You know you're just going to be sitting there and farming it out anyway, so get more bang for your buck. Um, and I also really like the rotation from Shalka. They know that Braum and Callista are so hard to deal with right now. We don't have control of the bottom side. The dragon's already been given up. We can make a very quick rotation, try to beat them to the play, and take a Rift Shell for free. Well, Misfits seem to have sort of read or anticipated it. They've swapped two to at least match the but 2v2. too late, quick shot, because they got the Herald. Yeah, there we go. Advantage Shelka. And of course, there's still two and a half minutes before the turret plates drop. I uh, don't think any of them have fallen yet. I'm taking a look at the minimap. So obviously, Herald will help. And now Odo, uncontested. 
It's Shelka that started, so Odo's already been able to pick up a couple in this bottom lane. But this is, again, very slow rotations to match the lane assignments from Misfits, kind of resetting themselves up. Odo getting gold off the plates, the fact that they picked up the Rift Herald for Shalka, um, the early rotation for Topside, and now it's setting themselves up for a play here. Oh, let's take a look. Abadage, Sleepy Trouble Bubble can be game-changing. Memento is spotted out on top of a control ward, and he's just going to summon the Rift Herald. By the way, Abadage has been caught somewhat by Maxlaw, or maybe it's the other way around. Maxwell takes a trouble bubble to the face. And look at the mini-map. The duo from Misfits, they're roaming from the top lane. So is doing his best to defend this tower. And he should be able to keep it alive. Yeah, so the tower stays, but Odo gets so many of those plates. And I believe he got them to himself as well, because yep. Jarvan had been zoned off from the bottom play. Um, but I really want to quickly point out, this is exactly why they took the Zoe. Because you can see Abadagi's only goal isn't the 1v1 matchup with Yasuo. It's now to control the jungle entrances. Use that sleepy trouble bubble and throw it into choke points to help cut off Shalka. So as they make plays to side lanes, Misfits are always going to be delayed to react to the play. And so crucially important when you think of champions like Yasuo, or Callista that need to be so positionally aware as the game plays out, and Abadaga can just completely mess that up. Now, we do take a look at Upset being caught. I didn't quite see the setup there, but I'm going to make call. some assumptions, yeah. and it's going to be a Fates call into a Braum, ultimate into a Sej, ultimate into a... You didn't even get to play the game. No. He's uh, got Flash and Heal up. He didn't get to play the game. Even with Rocket Jump and Flash, just a good catch by Misfits, and it is the jungler that picks it up to kill. So, Maxor will be happy with at least a, a reply there. One for one in kills, and still just 1,000 gold separating the teams. Uh, also, important to note, Hans Summer picked up a very, very early stopwatch. So that could be game-changing in the next few skirmishes. We'll keep our eye on that timer as we take another look at Upset. Uh, yeah. Wow, okay. Ooh. That's a beautifully changed CC right actually, there. That felt personal. That actually felt, like, personal, but... I, I like it. I like that it is a, a good kill here for Misfits. But we do need to comment that you expended the Callista Flash and three ultimates to secure that kill on Tristana, and she still has all of her summoner spells. The next dragon's coming up. It's not something like an Infernal or a Mountain, um, but fighting this, if, unless Misfits get kind of perfect setup for it, it is more dangerous because they don't have access to that summoner spell for Callista. I think maybe they bypass it because Yasuo really strong on the uh, the static shiv. Yeah. He'll walk out. He will. Into Flag and drag available. Here comes Fabavin. Now Red Buff was secured. Where's Abadage? Abadage finished the recall. He was hanging around. And Fabavin picks up the kill. I mean, Abadage was there for support and left. I'm in the right. I'm, I'm looking at the screen. I'm like, Abadage's there. It's fine. He'll just walk it out. Probably have to burn a flash. He just left him to die. Unbelievable, and of course, with Memento down, this dragon that could have been contested is no one contested. Second Ocean Drake goes the way of Misfits. Soez is doing his best to keep this tower alive, even using the Hemo Plague. But I actually think double Ocean Drakes against a champion like so uh, Zoe can be so impactful. That's a double knockup from the Pulverize headbutt. Trying to get used. He has a teleporter as well. Upset's jumped in. He's got the flash. He's got the heal. Somebody heals you. Stopwatch by some time. Odo Wamne completes the TP, and this is an easy double kill for Shalka for Odo Wamne. And it's the fact that the cannon picks that uh, picks up both the kills. They also have the creep wave. They can force in. Uh, Soaz doesn't have his ultimate, but he still has pool. There we go. The protobelt to clear it out. Yeah, exactly. Soaz and Odo complete those teleports, so the tower will be defended for now. I know we see it all the time, and we don't necessarily point it out. Use your protobelt to clear waves. It is super helpful. It's one of the reasons why the professionals built it for so long so early on, because you can just automatically clear a wave with something like E protobelt. All right, Soaz, flash and sanguine pool needs to be perfect. Got caught up. There's the W. Here comes Maxor. Ultimate's available. Manages to lock up Memento, but that's already a kill. Memento dropped very, very low. Here comes Feb, he's got red buff available as well. Abadage is coming from the river. Now Maxwell, how far does he chase? Sleepy Trouble Bubble is actually knocked away from. I think Ignor used the headbutt there. So Maxlaw doesn't get any trouble and ends up being a trade one for one. I mean, saving Private Oda Wamne at the end of the day it was the same call either way. Ignar just punted him away, yep. didn't connect with the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, but they got Cannon out. They did indeed, and it was Febivin that picks up his second kill of the game. His, you know, item break points starting to be accelerated. Static Shiv already secured. And I start to get nervous when I see a, a, a Yasuo that's two and one. Yeah, rightfully so, because it's also Yasuo and Vladimir, the way that they can dominate side lanes, and there's going to be few options to contest. I was saying it's good that Otto is sitting 3 0 0, because it means that that Kennen will have more priority and more pressure in the side lane. Um, but again, it's the likes of a Yasuo and a Vlad. Eventually, there will just be a breaking point where Kennen cannot deal with it. 
The fact that he's 3-0, and I assume that pushes the window deeper into the game. He's already got Proto Belt, already got Morena Nomicon, so that's, that's a good itemization into Soaz. But, but he, for me, it's, you know, what does Odo choose to do? Does he try to match the side lane pressure, or does he try to step up for these team fights? We're going to find out. Fivvin's getting caught out. There goes Odo. Slicing Maelstrom. Easy shutdown. Four and zero. Finds a pick with Ignore. And that's the softball. Of, that's exactly what I want to see from Odo. I just want Shalka to use their wombo combo abilities on the composition, use the drop, use the Alistar, use a very fed cannon right now, and maximize your damage output as the crowd. He got it this time. Thank got you the blue very much. Abadage, round two. He takes down the Blue Sentinel. Got a lot of fans here. Huge uh, fan burst from both uh, Denmark as well as Portugal, in fact. So thank you very much to everybody here. Hence the cheers and the loud noises. I will try my hand a little bit of Portuguese in the next game. I'm really going to mess it up, though. And Chalka, as we look back on screen, they're nearly 3,000 gold up at 17 minutes. Despite a few small blunders, they seem to be ahead. They've got the kill advantage, they've got the gold advantage, and with the exception of the dragons, uh, they're setting themselves up very well uh, as we move into this mid-game phase. And normally with their comp, you wouldn't say that they want to push tempo right now. They want more scaling options for upset, but because of how far ahead Odo is, push tempo as long as Kennen is involved with the play. So it's about where Shalka are making the plays and with what members they're doing so. Like, this could be dangerous because their fed member isn't there, so they need to be a bit more cautious setting up this fight, despite the goalie that they have. No teleport for Odo Wamne, four members of Shalka in the northern quadrant and a battle in the river over Vision. There goes Memento going real deep flag drag cataclysm. Upset tries to chase with a rocket jump, but there's no follow-up. Uh, a little bit of a eager, optimistic attempt there, but it did force the flash from Axel. Yeah, he thought he had a pick there. You know, you might as well throw it out. Abadage had zoned away Yasuo. So that's how the wind wall's supposed to work there. Yeah, nicely done by Febavin. And Maxwell waiting. Glacial Prison will be flashed away from. That was the W from Abadage, actually. So he was able to pick that one up, that Spell Thief. And now Odo, the Fed member, 4 and 0, 800 gold bounty, starts to roam up. And every time that little electric hamster moves around, you need to get nervous. Ah. Uh. This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. Ooh, fell just a little bit short. No Cataclysm for Memento. But look at the pressure. Shalka with all of the tower damage. They may even be able to pick this one up. Here comes Macklaw, jumps onto Memento, no follow-up from Febby, and the tower's gonna drop. And the big thing is, is that Sejuani had used the ultimate, so they were free yep. to make such an aggressive play. And you better believe, if that bubble had hit, they were looking for the dive. Jarvin and Kennen were coming in for the pincer. Now the thing is, is Infernal Drake now up in 30 seconds. All of the big cooldowns are going to be back up, but with that mid tower being down, it should be much easier for Shalka to get priority, shove that lane down, and then get into the dragon area first. Will Shalka be able to keep this lead up? 3,000 and gold break their losing streak six games in a row they've lost and take down misfits in the process this is dangerous all right ignore's moving forward to try to set some vision up but there's no one to punish him just yet frost i understand that but ignore has this tendency where he just goes a little bit too far ahead of his team and he's not punished right there but he has been in the past just wait for your team you have the right idea you're putting vision in the right spot but just wait for backup all right zoom out it's an infernal drake both teams are setting up for a potential fight Who's in a better position, as it looks like Shalka in the pit already? I'm going to go with the team with three control wards on the objective and someone asleep. All right, Soas is dead. Make that dead. Out. Now, obviously, it's an easy setup. And Abadage Zoe, he did not care about the laning phase. 0, zero 2 and those trouble bubbles are game changers. And you have to think that Misfits, you know, you heard it from Coach Musvi that they wanted to be more proactive. They wanted to give Shalka a game. And frankly, they have just been so late on the call. So many late rotations, not contesting the Rift Herald. Unless it was given away from them for free, everything has been taken. Well, that's the case. Now Shalka, first dragon on the board, six kills to three. Infernal Drake secured. And Shalka are gonna just keep using Oda Wamne's cannon. Five and zero. If he can keep pressure on the side then, and you can bet your bottom dollar he will, it's going to allow Shalka to play around some of the other objectives. And I, I don't mind Odo in the side lane, but I don't want to see it. I'm like, if you're this fed, use the AoE cannon ult. Be the big team fight. This is a cool call, but it's unfortunately spotted out by a ward. Oh, will Misfits back away in time? Will the fight break out? Teleport is now being used. Sleepy Trouble Bubble will catch Gorilla. And Abadaga has got the paddle star available. Odo and Memento are nearby. They're not pulling off. All right, Abadaga goes in. Look at the damage on the hard sum. He's backing away. There's a million red stacks on the Baron, but the red can't be popped. Memento and Odo, they combo for a triple kill. Baron is still available to be secured. Here comes Upset for one. Misfits, they're
They're done! They're dead in the water! And thank you! A quadra kill for Oda Wamne. The thing is, is as soon as the uh, sleepy trouble bubble hit, you know that they can see you. Misfits tried to make the decisive call. We have the rend, we're gonna force it down, we can burn it through. That's not double o uh, double mountain, that's double ocean. You couldn't do it fast enough. Unbelievable, nearly 10,000 gold in the lead. Shulka will take another tower, the third of the game. Start to back away. Look at Soaz's face. Oh, man. This is just... This is just... Game over. Well played, Shalka. To start it, it's a desperation call. You feel that you have a composition that can turn really well off of Baron. So think about it from Misfit's perspective. You can throw a Callista ultimate immediately off of Baron. You can jump with Braum. Like, if they did approach from the Baron pit, you can start a big wombo combo fight. But they didn't do that. They actually just sunk in, planted their feet, said burn the Baron down, and left themselves completely exposed. Misfits. They can fight back. They committed to a call, and that was a, a depressed grin into disbelief. And Schalke in absolute control. Oda Wamne, 9-0-1 on this cannon. Frost, they did exactly what you wanted. They found the team fight. Now it was gifted. It was packaged, gift wrapped with a pretty bow that said, here you go, Shalka. Jump on us with Slicing Maelstrom. But between two teams that have struggled to make the decisive call, that's been the difference maker today. Shalka have made the decisive calls, and that guy on your screen, Odo, just a second ago, has been the big factor there. Yeah, he was given a lot of kills, but he was the guy who flew in on the cannon ultimate. Yes. And if someone is going to step up and lead a very young Shalka roster, I want it to be the veteran of Odo Wambe. Well, that is exactly who it is. Is. And you cannot, cannot underestimate or, or, or misrepresent just how important the Zoe pick has been. Maxwell goes for the flash engage. The sleep! The sleep interrupts a feb of an ultimate. Abadage 007 with a license to kill has not done it yet, but has been absolutely influential. With Baron empowered minions in two lanes, upset a memento push. Top, Odo pushes bottom, tower's gonna fall, and Shalka. They are on the verge of breaking their losing streak, and they're on the verge of potentially knocking Misfits out of playoffs. I do want to quickly kind of touch on the lane assignments, because I think what uh, Shaka are doing here is really cool. They're pairing the Jarvan with the Tristana. We already know that Tristana can shred through objectives so quickly because of the satchel charge, but in tandem with the uh, steroid attack speed that she'll get from Jarvan's flag, it's actually cool, because usually you would see Tristana paired up with the Alistar, but instead they've parked Ignar with Abadage. So uh, Shaka very smartly reading the map about how to maximize to tear this apart. All right, here comes Febby. Not going to be able to get the uh, knock-up. Ignore with a little bit of a styling hex flash. In case any follow-up did come in, he was ready to land the combo. While that's going on, Soaz trying to use the Hemo Plague to push Odo back out of lane. Misfits, they need to defend these Baron, these inhibitor towers, for as long as Baron survive. 20 seconds left on the clock. And it is a very, very difficult toss. It's a very tense moment. Now, Misfits still do have so much Wombo Combo. They still have a lot of items exactly where they need them, which is on the likes of the Callista. Two item Power Spike Champion. Same thing for the Yasuo. So despite the gold lead, despite the fact that Shalka have swallowed up everything in the map, there was an opportunity that Misfits, if they find one person out of position, could immediately delete them and at least live to see another day. Oh, man, just do not pick the wrong time. 10,000 gold deficit. It is a tiny, tiny window of opportunity. And yes, you, you've said it, there's a lot of CC. There's no margin for error. And just to remind everybody what the standings look like and how important this game is. He doesn't get a golf clap for his third blue buff? Nope, not this time around. That was an easy one. Thank you. There's a few people clapping. Thank you, Berlin. Thank you for joining us. But look at the standings. Misfits Gaming and Shelka, seven wins, eight losses. This will set you to eight and eight alone in sixth place. And the next game, it will be Splice taking on SK. Soaz is running for his life. He still has Flash available. Not even going to use it because he's just run down. 10, 0, and 1 on Kennen. He's doing massive damage, stacking up all of that AP. Well, I've also just heard from Stats Team Frostgrun that that was Soaz's 50th death this split. That is in 15, now 16 games. He is the second highest number of deaths only behind Dreams, and now Sleepy Trouble Bubble will lock down Gorilla. He's able to escape with his life for now. Upset Rocket jumps forward. The inhibitor is being focused down. Abadage wears the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, gets thrown out. Doesn't find a target this time around, but the inhibitor will fall in the top lane, will fall in the mid lane, and it's upset. And manages to lead the charge this time. He got a Penta yesterday and lost the game. But this will feel a whole lot better. 
pick up that win, take sole control of sixth place for now, and if SK lose the next game, and it means that Schalke have that game buffer in the race for playoffs. And to be frank, Upset wasn't a big part of this win. He no. did his job. Yep. Knew his responsibility on the pick like the Trishana. It's Everyone's eyes are going to be on Oda Wamne, but I do want to give a huge shout out and credit to Memento and Abakage. The control really did start from the mid lane, and then it just spiraled over into Odo. And then once Odo was kind of the beneficiary of the early kills, then he took over the game. And you need to give some more credit to Abadage because he lost his flash at, what, four minutes? Still played all the way back. He didn't even get the first blue buff, at, uh, his first blue buff anyway, like six-ish minutes. So, you know, it was a challenging laning phase, shall we say. I mean, uh, you can see in the uh, the score lines reflected how many, what, four out of five members have participated in, what, that's like the majority 75% of, the kills. Yeah. of the kills? I mean, upset's not even there. Four out of his team's 12. And everyone else, you're talking 11 out of 12, 9 out of 12, 7 out of 12. So very nicely done. And now all of a sudden, Misfits, they're just like, run away! Don't pick the fight. They get one moment, one opportunity. So it's a fight. They're legs are weak and you know they're gonna have to go home and cry to their mommies and try to eat some spaghetti but i don't think they're gonna be able to because shalka setting up for brad there's a few people who got that one thank you very much and shalka oh that hurt paddle star to the face abadaga hasn't even finished and third item yet. Shaka know that they don't need to start this Baron unless it's free. They know that they just need to lure Misfits. This yep. is not about the Baron. Look at the minimap as well. Super minions pouring into the base from the bottom lane. Supers are being pushed back in the middle lane. And with the amount of damage that Shalka have, they can set up this Baron safely. Ignaz going on a mission. He's trying to find a target. If he can get in behind a crucial carry, this is the game-winning moment for Schalke. Look at the indecisiveness from Misfits. They are trying to engage in someone, and they cannot find a target. Meanwhile, the Super Creep Wave has come in. The Callista Ultimate ate nothing, and you have to completely reset. Zero targets, zero fights, and Ignar, he's going to woo, almost find Hans Summer. I really, really thought that was going to be a dead 80 carry, but Hans Summer's recall completes. This is just, frankly, frustrating to watch if you're a Misfits fan. You're watching your team slowly oh, lose the game. Man, Oduwamne, dodge, dip, duck, dive, cataclysm from Memento. Legendary 11 kills on the trot. Make that a double. Fevy's running for his life. He can't even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the support right now. Abadagi comes in for his first kill of the game, and Shelka are looking to break their losing streak. It was too little too late when Misfits finally decided to pull the trigger. All hail Shalka. They destroyed Misfits this game. Unbelievable. Soez goes down for his fifth death of the game. And Shalka are one foot closer to playoffs. Ignat is trying to push more broken faces from Soez. And the man of the moment, Odo Amne. Shalka take down Misfits. very tense game and you can feel a lot of the emotions going into it just looking at the player cams i'm not going to dance around it misfits looked pretty broken in a lot of instances you even saw shalka shaking a little bit you know taking away the blue buff on accident a couple of missteps here and there but finally making it connect for the first time in seven games shalka will be going to shake the hands of their opponents they break the losing streak, unlocked by Odo, controlled by Abadage. Top half of the map finally do it. And like you said, heartbreak for Misfits. I want to give you a percentage update. At the beginning of the game, Schalke were locked into playoffs in 40% of scenarios. With this win, it goes up to 72% of remaining scenarios. And the big thing for me is now Schalke have also secured the head-to-head -head over Misfits. Oh man, that is heartbreaking. And if you're a Misfits fan, Misfits can still make playoffs, but they no longer control their own destiny. They need other teams to lose around them in order to be in with a shot. It's just, it's devastating, it's frustrating. It's not just uh, being frustrated as a Misfits fan, you can see it on the players' faces. Yes. You had uh, so many tools, so many options to make those proactive plays to, again, to quote Moosby, give Schalke a game. And it just felt like nothing ever quite lined up, that there was just a little bit of desync that uh, Kenan snowballed out of control. He became too big of a problem. And I want to give a lot of credit to Memento. This is a man that has 
had a few missteps on the stage, even today with that blue buff, you know? And my gut reaction when I saw that, I'm like, it's happening again. It's, it's going downhill from there. But it didn't matter. It didn't have an impact in the game. Because individually, the top three of the map stepped up and Ignaz Alistair found the right moments. You can still criticize a few very small moments. But at the end of the day, Schalke was significantly stronger than Misfits. Yeah, because the, the fact of the matter is, is they lose yesterday when they get a pentakill on their ADC, but Schalke really excel in the same way that kind of Fnatic do when their superstar ADC doesn't have to be the sole carry. Yeah. You know, this this wasn't a game about upset. You could see the damage. This was a game entirely about Odo, and then huge credit to the rest of Schalke. That whole top side of the map controlled the jungle, were able to allow him to pick up the early kills, and then just take over the game as a team. So, Kennen, Odo Amne dealt more damage than How many the misfits? entire Misfits team combined. Okay, first of all. Secondly, he did more damage than Memento, Abadage, and Upset. But when you are a cannon that goes unkilled, and I didn't quite see his final score on 12, 0, and 1, uh, I think that's justified. I want to say that most of that was probably done in that single Baron pit. Like, everyone was pretty full health. He just came and just deleted health bars. We may have to actually double check that with the stats team a little bit later. But I mean, I, this is going to sound, this is going to be insanity, okay? So bear with me. But like the tiny silver lining of that Baron call from Misfits, all five members stuck to the call. It was a terrible call. No, right? uh, here's the thing, though. Again, if you actually look at Misfit's composition, because we don't think about this a lot, the ability to turn off Baron, yes. to say that we're starting Baron, we've lured you over here, we're a team fight composition, and we can quickly snap and look. You've got a, a Callist ultimate, you have the okay. Sejuani yeah. ultimate, uh, the Vladimir wants to be there anyway to spread around the Hemo Plague. Like, it's very possible for Misfits to say they're probably going to approach if they do just fight them. That was the problem. They didn't turn and fight. They yeah. just decided to plant their you feet like, let's just rend this one out, boys. You can't turn and fight when you're locked in a Cataclysm and a slicing Maelstrom, and it'll be no surprise that your candidates for key player of the game include Odo Amde, Memento, and Abedaga. I mean, it's the three you took over. Jump on at LOL Esports and vote. I mean, it's super, super tough for me, but I think it is going to be obviously Odo that takes it. Really? It was really tough? For me, it's Odo uh, uh, or Abedaga. I think from the early game, I think his Sleepy Trouble Bubbles really helped unlock many of those more fights. So for me, it's tough. I'm still going to vote Odo. I mean, who am I kidding, right? You but... have to vote Odo. That was like a highlight reel. And we just happened to have Odo Amde standing by. We do, we do. Thank what you so much, Greg Sean Brothers. Yeah, what a surprise to see you standing here next to me. And I've got a surprise for you, although you might have guessed it, Odawamne. In that game, you did more damage, personally, than the entirety of Misfits combined. What do you make of that? Uh, I mean, they kind of trolled by leaving Kennen open, and I don't know, they kind of just entered their whole mid game and giving us the Baron fight and all of that. So, I mean, I don't know, this game was just a dream game for Kennen. Let's talk about that Baron Steel, because I think we're going to bring it up on screen so we can enjoy that moment once again, because it deserves some love. But what mistakes did Misfits make there? Uh, I mean, I don't even know why they started Nasher, because, uh, I mean, we did some play on both sides, and then they thought they can just uh, switch the map and just kind of like trade sides. But I kind of got the ward on Nash, and then it was really obvious that I was still in top side, but then they just started and never stopped and they didn't even have vision on me so I don't know they just kind of trolled really bad and it must be pretty satisfying to get a quad kill in that moment no because... I mean it, I, okay it, it sucked because like if you notice in that fight Tristana does absolutely nothing he just walks up pew, just like that steals my pentakill and yeah I mean, that guy's a douchebag. So actually, you're quite annoyed that it wasn't the Penta then? Yeah, of course. Well, I think you've got two more matches next week. Maybe we can see a Penta kill then. I mean, did you see our last seven games? <laughs> well, I wasn't going to bring it up, but now you mention it, Odoamne. Why have you lost the last six games? Uh, I mean, I, I think teams were just really bad at first. And the stuff we were playing was kind of covering a lot of our flaws as a team. Um, so now that kind of the meta swapped where we were kind of like slumping and stuck in a place where we needed to kind of learn the fundamentals and teams just progressed way faster than we did and we were kind of like stuck in the old meta and, and we couldn't really progress the games with new picks and stuff. So I think it kind of got fixed for the last two weeks but I know we we're still kind of behind the other teams and some games were just a bit unlucky. Well, before we go, and I know there's a bit of support probably in the audience for this young man, Memento, yesterday tweeting, he said he'd lost it, he didn't know how to play League of Legends anymore. Actually, I feel like he played his part today, do you? I think he played good today. It's just hard because 
him and Abedagi are the center of all criticism, and that's just League of Legends. Made in Jungle get the most flack for everything we do, and a lot of our issues came from the mid jungle, and they were kind of not them specifically, but us as a team with how we are using them, we are kind of behind on the stuff we were supposed to do. So I think he was just really demotivated and upset that he just felt that he wasn't doing anything good, you know. But there's been progress in him and Abedagi's play, and I think it was kind of like harsh for the things he said about himself, but. Uh, I just hope he takes this as like personal motivation to get better for the next weeks. And are you motivated for week nine? Because you got Spice and G2. With us? No. Yeah. Have you not? No. Who have you got next week? Uh, Origin and Rogue. Well, there you go. Honestly, you were absolutely perfect in this item, aren't they? I clearly was not, yeah. which is a shame. And in go fact, back to CS. yeah, I, I might, I might have to actually. So if I'm not here after the break, then it's because I do arm they kick me off the show, and I don't blame him, quite frankly. So yes, we are going to a break. You guys don't know anywhere. We got SK versus Spice coming up next. He has a teleporter as well. Upset's jumped in. He's got the flash. He's got the heal. Somebody heals you. Stopwatch by some time. Odo Omni completes the TP, and this is an easy double kill for Shalka. We're going to find out. Everyone's getting caught up. There goes Odo. Slicing Maelstrom. And look at the damage on a hard sum. He's backing away. There's a million red stacks on the Baron, but the red can't be popped. Memento and Odo, they combo for a triple kill. Baron is still available to be secured. Here comes Upset for one. Misfits, they're done. Frustrating to watch if you're a Misfits fan. You're watching your team slowly oh, lose the game. Man, Odo Omne, dodge, dip, duck, dive, cataclysm from Memento. Legendary. And Shulka are one foot closer to playoffs.